Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name is Max, I'm the host of this channel and today's video is brought to you by Lads on Tour, an awesome trivia game that anyone can master. Um, today's video I'm going to be covering my opinion on who's going to receive what place at the final table of the Six Nations. I'll be predicting who's going to come last, through to who is going to win, and perhaps get a Grand Slam should they win every single game. <laughs> um, a few videos I've done discussing all the squads from these teams will have given you kind of my raw thoughts. Now I'm going to have a decent crack to see who's going to um, get what done in the competition. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons before we get into anything, and I want to remind my new viewers to subscribe to this channel if you enjoy my content. Um, yeah, so we'll just get straight into things. Um, I think Italy is going to come last. Um, Italy are well known for being very much professional wooden spooners at this point. They are building towards something, I can guarantee you that. They beat Australia as of late, they beat Wales as of late. They just need to continue to build a little bit more I think though because the key decision makers in their team are still very raw. Michele Lamaro, the captain for example is just 24 years old and Ange Capuozzo who won breakthrough rugby player of the year um, is just got seven test caps. He'll be their uh, key player to watch this tournament and former All Black Kieran Crowley is their head coach. Crowley is quite a smart coach who can get underperforming nations to rise to a higher level because he doesn't take any nonsense and um, considering Italy have gone up to 12th in the world I think there's definitely some more improvement we can expect from them. I just think Kieran Crowley's got a bit more of a long term strategy compared to the likes of Connor O'Shea and Jacques Brunel who just could not get Italy firing because they built the team around players who thought they were bigger than the team. Now we move on to the nation who I think is going to place 5th. Well, English fans, Eddie Jones got sacked, and now you've got what you've wished for. Steve Borthwick was Eddie Jones's assistant coach over in Japan and for England as well until 2020 when he became the head coach of the Leicester Tigers. Leicester were very dangerously close to relegation before Borthwick came in. They improved his first season in charge, then they won the Premiership at the end of 2022's 2021-2022 um, season. But let's face it guys, Leicester played very boring rugby. You're not going to get an improvement on what you were already calling boring rugby when Eddie Jones was in charge. While Freddie Stewart, who's going to be the key player, is going to shine, you're going to see a few more um, shining forwards, you're not exactly going to get everything to click because without Marcus Smith in at 10 and with Owen Farrell doing it all on his own, you're not going to have as many playmakers to expand the field for you to do your thing. England, you're ranked 5th in the world for now, but it's safe to say you're going to start falling down the rankings. Steve Borthwick, quite frankly, is too inexperienced to be the head coach of a Tier 1 nation. He was only the captain of England as far back as 2009 when he was himself a player, and to be the head coach of a Tier 1 nation, you need to have had a lot of experience, and you can't be relying on what a guy achieved in his playing career to determine what he's going to get done as a head coach. The nation I'm predicting to come fourth place is going to have a very rough 2023. For the Scottish team to qualify for the World Cup quarterfinals, I'm thinking pretty much that they have to win the Six Nations outright in order to become a third at the World Cup, as they are in the pool of death with Ireland and South Africa. The Scottish squad under Gregor Townsend, their head coach, is looking for the first time in the um, time that I've retired from playing myself, like a very settled squad, I'm gonna say that now. But I don't think that Townsend really has the right players to do this with. Settled squads with high levels of um, combined playing cohesion and uh, some experienced decision makers are often the ones that get far, but with players such as Finn Russell who are trusted to be the key, the key decision makers there, sorry, with them lacking in some very basic skills, I do fear for Scotland. 
It's going to be a bit better with a bit of weight taken off the back of Stuart Hogg for sure, with Jamie Ritchie now as captain, so I do think that Scotland will indeed win the Calcutta Cup, but with um, the fact that they're still 7th in the world, um, I'm just not 100% sure if we can expect to see much better than them in the few months leading up to the World Cup. Now a word from today's sponsor Lads on Tour, a few of uh, my New Zealand audience members still watch my videos about the Six Nations and uh, this is a very good Kiwi sports quiz kind of theme of a trivia game. Uh, me and my wife had a really good time playing the game the other day when we were on the way to work and stuff. I got a few cool questions such as um, where Brendan McCullum scored his uh, highest uh, cricket score in the tests. I got uh, questions about the scoreline of the 2015 Rugby World Cup and um, I got a few basketball ones there as well so luckily I had my wife to help me out with that one. Um, it's very much a good laugh. It's always good to um, grow your knowledge on the game and um, as my channel's almost pretty much themed about growing your rugby knowledge. I think that um, if you're just a Kiwi sports fan who loves to watch our country in general, this will be really good for you. Um, for Kiwis who are living over in the Northern Hemisphere watching these Six Nations games, maybe you could um, play a bit of this at half time as well to keep yourself entertained. What I'm going to do with um, my sponsorship here with our Lads on Tour is I'm going to be giving away four of the games over on my Instagram. So go check me out over on Instagram. I'm about to hit 20k and I'll be giving away some of these trivia games by lads on tour give me a visit over there so you can um, look at all the details that me and lads on tour have agreed with and it's going to be a very good time over there now back to the video the reason i've discussed england not doing very well is obviously because they've had a bit of a change at coach very late into a World Cup cycle, but the difference between them and Wales is that they have not got a very experienced coach at all, whereas Wales have got Warren Gatland back. Warren Gatland has won every single major trophy in World Rugby apart from Major League Rugby, Super Rugby and a World Cup. And um, I do think that a lot of the people who are a bit unsure about his tenure with the Chiefs need to look at the context of that team. It was a very young team and as there's no real game plan for the Kiwi teams, Gatlin's Chiefs couldn't really go his route of being the king of the counter anymore as New Zealand's teams basically all of the same strategy. To me it's no wonder that the Chiefs vs Crusaders match of Super Rugby Aotearoa was their most impressive as Gatlin had a reference point for Razor's tactics and what we could possibly do to overcome these Crusaders. Um, Warren Gatlin achieved a lot with Wales. He won over 20 trophies, he won three Grand Slams, and uh, Ken Owens, his captain, is one of the um, players who was guaranteed to start, so I think it's a fair call. George North is um, back from injury as well. I think we're going to see some good stuff from him, particularly with Joe Hawkins named in their first round of the Six Nations to balance things out a little bit. Wales are ranked ninth in the world, guys, I know that, but things are going up because the new coach in charge is highly experienced and has a reputation for developing teams at short notice. That's why he was the most successful British and Irish Lions coach of the professional era. We're now up to the last two teams and I'm predicting France to come second this time. By looking at their initial squad when I had my video previewing my raw thoughts on that, I had a look at their spine and I was like, you know, there's a lot of guys who were very inexperienced backing up their first choice players, so I would not actually be surprised to see France being alright with throwing a few games in order to develop talent. Maxime Luku, for example, isn't going to be playing because he's injured, and Cameron Wokey will also be missing due to injury. Same with our Pierre Bougeri at hooker. So France are doing what they normally do, and they are building depth. They haven't been scared to use B teams in mid-year tests under Fabien Galtier, and apart from when they play the team I think is going to win, I think they'll just be holding stuff back for the World Cup, and you know what, I don't blame them at all. They've now learned the habit of winning through 2022. Now they need to decide who the final third choice players are in their pecking order, as it's very clear who's coming in the first choice jerseys and the second choice jerseys they just have some final few tweaks to go over and I think losing the Six Nations 
will be a good reminder for them as to how high the standards have to be. Um, Grigory Aldrit, I'd say, is going to be a key player. He's played massive minutes in the Fabian Galtier era, and Antoine Dupont as captain is always going to do some damaging stuff. Um, as the team that's placed second in the world, they won't want to set a ridiculously sized target on their back, and I think France under Galtier are going to do everything completely correct in their timing their run perfectly. I seem to have built a rep as a Kiwi who was gracious in defeat, as I always seem to get a fair few views when I cover the Irish rugby team. Well, here we go again. I think they're going to win the Six Nations. They have probably reached their peak in this World Cup cycle, but if we're being completely honest, I think that because of the depth they've built and the huge amount of combined playing experience their players have, they'll be able to hold on to what they're at right now. John Johnny Sexton as captain is about to be the oldest ever Irish player and he'll want to go out with a bang in his last ever Six Nations as he's announced he will retire at the end of the World Cup. Josh van der Fleer, fresh off winning World Rugby Player of the Year, is certain to feature very much in Andy Farrell's team. They are the best rugby team in the world, the rankings have it correct and um, I'm expecting them to shine very much. Um, this is going to be a very entertaining Six Nations for the Irish fans as they are especially licking their lips for that World Cup. Um, this is the best chance they've ever had to get out of a quarterfinal. I'm backing them 100%. I think they can do it. They just need to remain calm, not overthink things and not like psychologically implode like how they did to Eddie Jones' England in 2019. Um, I don't think they're going to win a Grand Slam necessarily, but I think they are more likely to get a Grand Slam than France, hence why I've got them over here. France, you see are on a very, very long winning streak and it's going to end eventually. So I thought, you know what, um, considering the more wins you rack up in the row, the um, more likely it is to end next time. It's just stats working against the French this time and um, I'm wishing the Irish all the best. I think they are going to win. Just to recap, I think Italy are going to come last. England will come fifth. Scotland fourth. Um, Wales will come third with Gatlin back. France second and Ireland to win the whole competition. Thank you very much for viewing, guys. I will see you later. Cheers from Max.